Welcome back to episode 135 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. As always, I'm here with Troy. Uh, well, we're back, Troy. We <laughs> are. Toronto. We came back into uh, uh, chaos. Is, is that what we want to call our lives since we've been back? But we're plugging away. We're getting through it. Hey, we'll at least get to talk about hockey cards for a little bit. <laughs> so life's not life's not too bad. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing fantastic. We found a two-hour gap to record, and then I'm off to a practice because why not? Would why would you not want to go to an eight forty practice at night that ends at ten ten? That's fantastic. No rest for the weary, man. No rest for the weary at all. Yeah, like I said, we did make it back from Toronto. You flew, yep, and I drove. I took two days to get back. Kind of took well, day and a half. Took it a little bit slower. Did you have yep. a good flight back? Any? Uh, fun stories from from the airport or was it pretty smooth uh no flight back uh we had uh, we got delayed one hour and it's always great when they come on the intercom they're like ladies and gentlemen just let you know everyone at the gate air canada flight blah 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 we need to switch the aircraft because your current aircraft has too many problems (laughs) so they towed that sucker out brought in a new one it was super quick though it was about 40 minutes we were on the new one and off we went now it's an Air Canada. It was like an Embraer. I can't remember what they're called. One seven fives or something. They're just they were built in like they looked like the seventies. That you get up there, they're rattling, they're shaking. You just hope it stays together. <laughs> it's funny how they say too many problems because in my book, I know. one problem <laughs> is too many problems. I know for for an airplane, and I guess you really can't complain at that point, right? Because what are you going to say? No, I want to go on the airplane <laughs> with problems. Yeah, it's a. It's time. crazy. Once you work for an airline, you, you actually get a little more comfortable with all the stuff. And but yeah, it's one problem you don't. You, I I would rather not know. Don't tell me. Just say we need a new airplane. Your yours ran out of gas or something. Here. Pretty smooth sailing for me. No speeding tickets That's either good. there or back. So I was pretty proud of myself in in that regard. Made it all the way the first day driving to Beloit, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. My only goal getting back for that first day of driving was to get through Chicago. Yeah. Because Chicago can add three hours to your drive if you hit it at the wrong time. And so Mm -hmm. I, I pulled in to, I think Beloit about 11 PM. I've never stayed there before. Lovely city, Troy. Uh, From what I saw (laughs) in a hotel right up the highway at dark at night. Looks like a great city. Yeah. At dark. And then, and then made it home and started working on, uh, this episode, which uh, I think is a really good show, kind of happy to be back. It, it's fun to do sort of our recap episodes with like we did with Neil from yep. Toronto, but excited to get back to sort of a quote unquote normal episode too. Before sure. we get started, though, just a quick reminder that the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast. That means we rely on support from listeners and watchers like yourself to really help us cover our show expenses. Yes, believe it or not, the show has expenses. <laughs> Continue to produce more and hopefully better hockey card content and help us fund initiatives even in a small way to grow the hockey card hobby. So how do you do that? Well, you can go to Patreon and join our on a $199 support level tier. It's really for the first 199 supporters of our show. It's 5 bucks a month. You also get exclusive access to the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server where you can chat with us and the wonderful community of people that we have there every day. And I really felt the impact of the mm-hmm. Discord community this time in Toronto and just getting to meet uh, some of the awesome people from there and hang out with them through the week. Um, Yeah. Other than the support, which of course we need and it's nice. I I really love the friendships that we've been able to build through our discord as well. And so uh, if you support us, you get to participate in that as well. It's very easy to do. You can just go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com and click on the become a patron link at the top of the page. Or you go to the Patreon website at patreon.com and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. There's a link in the show description if you're listening to us on a podcast app or in the description on YouTube as well. And finally, in our Instagram and TikTok profiles, there's a link in our link tree there too. We have one new out of 199 patrons since our last episode, Jeff K. Uh, thanks a lot, Jeff. Already got him into the Discord and he's nice. contributing and chatting. So it's uh, great to have another person in there as well. All right, Troy, ready for the game plan? On today's show, we begin with the almost greatest NHL player to wear number 34 and number 35. We then continue our rookie deep dive series 
Next, it's hobby news, followed by a look at the question of, is now the time to buy Connor McDavid? We continue on with new product releases and then take a look at some of our favorite hockey cards in the PWCC weekly auction. We end the show with personal pickups. Okay, Josh, we have a two for one special today. We did this. Twofer. Last, yep, two for. We did this last year too. So, on our last episode, which was number 134, that was our Toronto Fall Sports Card Expo recap show. Very off the cuff, not a lot of scripting. So we just kind of roll with it. But then that means I got to double up today on our greatest player or almost greatest player to wear number. So we are now on number 34. So we're on episode 135, but I'm going to do number 34 right now. The almost greatest player to wear number 34. And just a reminder that previously we looked at the greatest NHL player to wear each number that matched our episode number. We used the hockey writers greatest NHL players to wear each number article. And for our second go-through, I'm selecting one of the runners-up from the article and dubbing that player the almost greatest NHL player to wear the number that matches our episode number. Okay, Josh, the almost greatest NHL player to wear number 34. Per the runners-up in the Hockey Writers' greatest NHL player to wear each number article and selected by me is Mika Kiprusov. Boy, I was dreading that name, but I think I got it. Mika Kiprusov. There you go. There, I screwed it up. Keep yourself. Yeah. The well, I have a couple things. Can I make a couple name comments here? Number one, the spelling of Mika is all sorts of wild. I had it wrong. Five, I had it five ways. different ways. I went back really? and fixed them all. I had them so I had it so wrong. No, like I had it wrong. It's spelled one way everywhere I looked, but I screwed it up. I also think it's kind of a cool name. Yeah. Like I sort of wish my name was Mika Kippersop. <laughs> yeah. M I I K K A. That's how you spell Mika. Mika. All right. Yeah, I know. We're about to lose all our Toronto fans here, though. Yeah, yeah, here we go. The other nominee at number 34 is Austin Matthews. And listen, we have talked about Austin Matthews a lot on our show. I don't think we've ever mentioned Mika Kippersoff. Plus, he's a goalie, so I selected him, and that's what we're going to do. As a reminder, the greatest number, the greatest to our number 34 was John Van Beesbrook. I, so, I do think it's a little early on Mr. Matthews, Mr. Yeah. Mustache. Yeah. but. Honestly, though, when you say in what three, yeah, maybe two four to three more years, years, yeah, it's not it. even going to be a contest. At yeah, that point. I agree a hundred percent. All right, so Mika Kippersoff, goalie from Turku, Finland. Kippersoff was drafted 116th overall in the 1995 NHL entry draft by the San Jose Sharks. Kippersoff played in 623 regular season NHL games over a 12 season NHL career. Kiprasov began his career playing three seasons with the Sharks. He then played the next nine seasons with the Calgary Flames before retiring from the NHL after the 2012-13 season. For his awards and accomplishments, he is a one-time Vezina winner, one-time Jennings winner, one-time NHL first all-star team selection, one-time NHL all-star game participant, and his number 34 will be retired by the Calgary Flames on March 2nd 2024. There you go. All you Flames fans have that to look forward to. For his career, Kippersoff had 319 wins, 213 losses, 71 ties for a two or with a 2.49 goals against average, 0.912 save percentage, and 44 shutouts. Uh, Trey, do, oh, yeah. do you think to be efficient that the Flames might go ahead and retire Huberto's number that night oh, too? Man. You know, just to save time. Is he still benched? Like he's getting. Yeah, I saw where he got <laughs> benched. Bad. It's, it's sad. Bad. It's like in my books here. Yeah, they got him. I don't know. You can't like who's going to take him. You can't buy him. I mean, it's just it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kiprasov made the playoffs in seven of his twelve NHL seasons, compiling twenty five wins, twenty eight losses, two point three two goals against, a point nine two one save percentage, and six shutouts in fifty six NHL playoff games played. For the best season of his NHL career, I'm going with his 2005-06 season where Kippersoff capped the season with the Vezina Trophy. For the 05-06 season with the Flames, Kippersoff had 42 wins, 20 losses, 11 ties, a 2.07 goals against average, .923 save percentage, and 10 shutouts in, I love this, 74 games played. <laughs> Those are numbers, like I've said many times, you will never see that again, I don't think. That's a good year. 
Yeah. Very good year. Unless the NHL drastically changes how they do goalies. But right now it's all about goalie management. And even Kiprasov has said he was basically injured because he played so many games. It's like his body just could not rest. And I don't talk about this, but with the national team, Finland, he actually sat out because he was saying, well, I'm, you know, I don't feel well. I'm injured. And then they were all mad at him. They're like, well, you kind of played through injury with the Flames. whole bunch of drama. But listen, two for one episode. I got to get through this quick. Yeah. Currently, Kiprasov lives in Helsinki, Finland. That's about all I could find about what he's up to these days. Maybe they'll be, I'm hoping there'll be more articles that come out around his retirement, his number retirement next year. But I couldn't find anything really what was going on with him now. So I'm going to just pretend he's a goalie coach somewhere in Finland. For his fun, interesting facts, his nickname is Kipper. And I think I saw also he's nicknamed the finisher. <laughs> During the 03 04 season, Kippersoft played 38 games and had a goals against average of 1.69, which at the time was the lowest goals against average in the modern NHL history. This record has since been surpassed by Brian Elliott and Josh to add Minnesota in the Wilds, Josh Harding. Would you, you know what guessed? Josh Harding is doing? He retired because of MS, right? He did. I have opinions on Josh Harding, but yes, he had MS, which is very sad. Not his fault, but let's just say he was not a nice person. But Oh, really? I mean, yeah. uh, the nice person thing comes up on our next player, and it's like, I don't really mind that he's not a nice person. Just I just, all I heard about him were people that were close okay. to the team. But yeah. Which those two oh, names God. surprised me as having the lowest goals against average. Yeah, yeah Hobby no Jaw. Hobby Jaw. Kiprasov holds the Calgary Flames all time career record for goal for goalies in games played, goals against average, wins, and shutouts. So definitely a Calgary legend. He's gonna get honored. I'm sure it'll be a fun time. I'm sure Flames fans have fond memories of Kiprasov. We'll have to ask Jer- you'll have to ask Jeremy on the on the show about uh yeah. Well, I, I, were you a Kiprasov fan? Not really. No. I, I might want to PC him now because I like his name. And I wonder, <laughs> too, if at the Jersey retirement, so we've decided it's not going to include Huberto, but I wonder <laughs> if there'll be a ceremonial passing of the torch to Dustin Wolf. There you go. Oh, Wolf. Well, Markstrom just sits in awkwardly, like <laughs> nobody's staring at him. Yeah, twiddles his thumbs and hope no one sees yeah. it. And then they'll bring back Brian Sutter to give some memorable quotes <laughs> for the Darryl team. Sutter. Or Daryl Brian Sutter. Man, I'm my Sutter. Too many Sutter all suitors. Up. Yeah, Daryl Sutter. Even though I don't think he coached Kipper South, but. Oh, did he? Sorry. Uh, this is a total. I mean, I'm like. Um, yeah, on air production, total, total, total tangent. But my fear is we forgot to bring this up last, and I, I like we don't, we literally don't remember our show, and we could have very well talked about this for forty five minutes in our last episode. <laughs> we, and then you said the name Sutter, and it just reminded me of it. We did bring up the gift we got. The Ryan no, Lewis. I don't think we did. I think I forgot that. I'm gonna bring it up right now. Yeah. So we had a listener, and I apologize a hundred times. I forget names, but his son. Or sons was it no one son one son, son. Yeah, yeah yeah made us a it's a Ryan Suter card it's a but, clear cut yeah it's a right? clear cut but his son glued eight marshmallows on it so it's like bordered in marshmallows it's absolutely fantastic it's downstairs I was prepping stuff I don't have it with me but it is awesome it is the definite marshmallow shooter card and apologies for forgetting everything was it, well it's it stells is the instagram and it was a jagger was that his kid's name i i think uh we'll get that right for sure but i think that that's yeah, right I... it is honestly the coolest thing we've ever been given now <laughs> if you haven't watched the show or listened or listened to our dumb things that we say why why would you have a ryan Suter card with marshmallow stuck to it because well of course ryan <laughs> Suter is the marshmallow thrower the softest shot in the history yep. of the nhl you can watch him take a shot from the blue line, go up, get a beer, go to the bathroom, come back <laughs> to your seat, and the shot will just be getting to the goalie. So it is an amazing gift, and yeah. we're very, very appreciative, and we will cherish it forever. So sorry, yeah. I'll let you get back to No, 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 that's, that's good you brought that up because, again, I 
I remember listening to sports card nonsense and they would have a terrible time remembering this kind of stuff. And I was like, well, how can you not remember that? Now I know why I can't. I'm, and I feel terrible. All right. Fun, interesting facts. I think I did this one. Nickname is Kipper, also known as the finisher. Oh, I read all these. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, rookie card. We got to do we got a rookie card. Here it is, boy. And you talk about crazy. I was looking at TCDB. There are three cards they designate with the rookie or the RC designation. Yeah. There's the 94, 95 finest, which I'm showing on the screen for the YouTube vi- vi- YouTube viewers, which is number 125. It's a rookie card. It's a world junior card. There's also a 201 Parkhurst and also an 0102 Upper Deck Victory card that they also gave the RC designation. However, the card I'm showing, the 94, 95 finest, by far and away has the most graded copies. So that's the one I'm going to go with for his rookie. Can I, card. can I ask you a question real quick, though? Yeah. So, like, what happened to all his cards between '94 and 2001? It's interesting. He didn't. He wasn't. A, he didn't play in the league until. So this would have been like I think he was 17, 18, but he didn't make the NHL until 2001, two. Yeah, he looked, there. If you're watching on YouTube in this, uh, he Finland, looks like he's, are you, <laughs> he looks tiny. Look like your son. Well, like honestly, like your son's <laughs> age. That's what I. Yeah. Would, I mean, your son has much better goalie technique, of course, because he's oh, yeah. from the greatest goalie coach that <laughs> America's ever provided. Yeah, true. But yeah, he looks really small. Well, I had that's why I was looking at these other cards. I'm like, what? Like, what is going on here? But this is the one. This is the one everyone's graded. So I went with it. Okay. So the, it's the 90. Okay. Oh, remember too, as you can see in the picture, these are the 94, 95 finest. They have the coding on them. So you can yeah. find them with the coding or without the coding. And if it's, Without the coding, I couldn't really verify. Does that mean someone removed it? Did they all have it? And it was a protective were... film yeah. that you okay. could peel. So, are you? I'm a coding guy. Are you a? a I a... hate it. Okay. I hate the coding because it. T- Thanks for being honest. Dist- well, it distracts me. I don't like. Uh... Yeah. All right. So for the 94 and 95 finest, without the coding, PSA 10 pop is 42 with a gem rate of 50. percent Last sale was on August 13th of 2023. For $77.78 US via eBay.com and verified in Terapeak. And then with the coding, PSA 10 pop is 12 with a gem rate of 17%. And the last sale I could find of the one with the coding was on January 10th of 2021 for $100.48 US via eBay.ca and also verified in Terapeak. So there you go. Moral of the story, you can get these pretty reasonable if they come out. Well, maybe Our not last, the one, maybe not the one with coding because it's been three years, but last thing really quick. Yeah. You know how we've lamented or commented that well, how much we like SP Legend signature edition and how mm-hmm. we've kind of thought at times, well, what could he do as a fo- as a follow-up? What there about this idea? How about for every one of these like late night late eighties, early nineties guys that really didn't have like um, let's be honest, like a really good rookie card. Yep. Like a Meeker Kippersoft. Cause it, I mean, no offense to Team Finland, but I'd prefer to see him in an NHL jersey in his rookie card. Yeah. If they went back and gave them like a, a, a better rookie treatment. You like that idea? I like that. Or else just make them a young guns. I think that'd be cool. Okay. Like I, I love the list of, you know, greatest players that not have a young guns. And I hope eventually that. I think that signature legend legends, no matter whatever it becomes, if they call it, keep calling it that, or they have to move on because it was a one-off, but they keep something going on the same, the yeah. same spirit of it. I hope they do some cool stuff. With it. When do you think upper deck is going to want us to start? And do you think our cubes will be right next to each other? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We're giving them just so many ideas. Billy, Billy's on it. He, he knows. We're working All for right. free already. Trent. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so that was our boy Kippersoft. So, Josh, now we have to go on to number 35, and I will read the little blurb. The almost greatest NHL player to wear number 35, per the runners-up in the Hockey Writers, greatest NHL player to wear each number article and selected by me, Josh, is this guy, Tom Barrasso. Very relevant in the news as we speak two days ago. I'll get to why I think most of Wait, wait, so you're kind of saying he's not known to be, like, super nice? Nope. (laughs) <laughs> okay, we'll so get to that. You say, and I'll keep in mind it's a kid show that Tom Barrasso is an is an asshole. <laughs> yeah, he lives up to his name. Is that what you're saying? Okay. 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 No, I, and I, I have a, I have an opinion on it, but here we go. Right, I'll, right. I'll get to it. Okay. The other nominees at number 35 were Mike Richter and Corey Schneider. I don't know who Corey Schneider is. 
Uh, he was a goalie, I believe. Devils, most of okay. most of his career, if I remember right. As or was it? Yeah, I think it was the Devils. As a reminder, the greatest tour number thirty-five was Tony Esposito. And Josh, I was very excited, very excited to do a goalie that I loved as a kid. I loved Tom Brasso. He's one of my yeah. boys. I was a big Brasso fan. I love '80s goalies. I think I've made that pretty well known on this show. You got Pelly Lindberg, Brasso, Pete Peters, Beaupre, Billy Smith, Jills Malash, Ron Hextall. I will stop. I, I, I started trying to list them by all these names, and I'm like, I should keep going. But yeah, okay, I don't really remember something. Yeah. And we got just some yep. smoke yep. in 91. <laughs> yep. the, okay. okay. He was the goalie. Hey, you know me so well. I don't even have to finish my question. Yeah, he was the goalie against us. So I should be all mad at him, but I'm not because I, I was a big Brasso fan. All right, Josh. Okay. He's a he's a goalie. He's born in Boston, Massachusetts, but grew up in Stowe, Massachusetts. Controversial. Yeah, very controversial. Brasso was drafted fifth overall in the 1983 NHL entry draft by the Buffalo Sabres. Brasso played in 777 regular season NHL games over a 19 season NHL career. Brasso began his career playing a little over five seasons with the Sabres. He then played the next 11 seasons with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that after that, he had stints with Ottawa, Carolina, Toronto, and St. Louis, which I just forgot about every one of those teams because they're only like a year maybe or 10 games. They're really short stints sure. at the end. Cup of coffee, as they like to say, right? Like a cup of coffee. So about our boy Brasso, his awards and accomplishment. Josh, he's a Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. He was put in the Hall of Fame two days ago. Was the well, when we, while we were in Toronto, right? You, yeah, we were the there. induction. Yep, the induction I ceremony. I think he was at the he was at the expo, right? He was a signer. So yeah, maybe. Brasso was a Hall of Fame selection in 2023. Two time Cup winner. He was the 83 84 Calder winner. 83-84 all-rookie team, one-time Vesna winner, one-time Jennings winner, one-time NHL first all-star team selection, two-time NHL second all-star team selection, one-time NHL all-star game participant. Interesting. That's why, okay, so in the only in the NHL can a player I know. play it's, for 19 years, make the Hall of Fame, and play in the all-star game one time. So I don't get into this, but we're gonna I'm going to read stats and – listeners and you might even be like are you kidding me like these are this isn't this is what i think of a hall of fame goaltender but okay. it's in the we're in the early 80s or in the 80s it was a whole different era and the analytics people i think are really helping him because they're do they do all these adjusted stuff and his numbers come out to like hall of fame numbers okay but so for his career we're also at 369 wins 277 losses 86 ties, a 3.24 goals against average, 0.892 save percentage, 38 shutouts. So most of the time we think below three, above 90 is like that cusp. But again, it's, this is really the era he played in, which was very high scoring. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. little close to Jack Campbell territory here. Oh, poor Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell AHL territory. Mm -hmm. Um Brasso made the playoffs in 13 of his 19 NHL seasons, compiling 61 wins, 54 losses, a 3.01 goals against, 0.902 save percentage, and six shutouts in 119 NHL playoff games played. For the best season of his career, look at this picture. Come on. Are you kidding me? That is awesome. Like, the glove looks like it's falling apart. I don't even know what this patchwork is, but it's awesome. For the best season of his NHL career, I'm going with his 83-84 rookie season where Brasso capped the season with the Vesna Trophy and the Calder Trophy. Now, he did have some seasons where he did have better stats on some metrics, but winning a Vesna and a Calder in the same year is pretty special, as we'll see when we get to fun facts. So I'm yeah. going with his 83-84 season. And for that season with the Sabres, Brasso had 26 wins, 12 losses, three ties, a 2.85 goals against average, 0.893 save percentage, and two shutouts in 42 games played. After his playing career, Brasso has had various coaching positions in a whole bunch of different leagues, and he's been in everything, KHL, ECHL. I don't know if the AHL, but you look him up, and he's had a ton of different uh, NHL, I think he was a coach with the Hurricanes, too, for a little bit. So he's definitely staying active. 
All right, now let's get into the fun, interesting facts with our boy Brasso. Nickname was Tomcat or Tommy B. I like Tomcat. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. I don't really like you, those nicknames. <laughs> Barrasso went straight from high school to the NHL. Per his NHL.com bio, he is the only goalie to go straight from high school to the NHL. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's definitely crazy. I, I'm not going to challenge their bio, like the NHL.com bio, but you figure there'd be someone else that did that. Brasso wow. was the first player to win the Calder Trophy and the Vesna Trophy in the same year. Now, do you think Bedard will tie that this year? Yeah. <laughs> How's he going to get the Vesna? <laughs> well, has he led in any goals? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I rest my case. He'll throw a net for one game, see what he can do. Brasso is the first American goalie to win 300 games. Brasso missed the entire 2001 season to spend time with his family after his daughter was diagnosed with cancer and losing his father to cancer. So remember, that's sad. yeah, it's, it's sad. And I should say this is, that's more of a fact. It's not fun or it could be interesting, Yeah, but you just well, remember. I mean, good for him to yep. prioritize. Yep. In 2023, here we go. Brasso was named as an inductee to the hall of hockey hall of fame. He was first eligible for inclusion to the hall in 2006 in the years following Brasso's retirement, he had frequently been cited as a worthy candidate given his play and statistical accomplishments for his era of play. However, Brasso's confrontational and abrupt personality, particularly with members of the media, has been noted as explanations for why Brasso was not named to the Hall of Fame for 17 years since he was eligible. Brasso's public perception of having a difficult personality has existed since his playing days. All right. I think this is the stupidest reason to ever keep anyone out of the Hall of Fame. I get the personal, if you have personal issues, like, I don't know, whatever, drugs, alcohol, be it whatever, that stuff I can live with. I don't, I maybe don't agree with it, but the Hall of Fame stuff, just because you weren't nice to the media or some teammates, that to me is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So the he's media, not in the Hall because he's crabby. Is that Yeah. Thing? The media members are such babies sometimes with this stuff. Just because he wouldn't give you an interview, there was a, they, I was reading about him. There was a whole year he didn't talk to. I think it was either the Ottawa or the Pittsburgh media. Just refused to talk to him, and of course they all got mad. That doesn't fly today. I think like no, they get did. fined. Yeah, you get fined if you don't talk. But I still think that's just that's the stupidest reason to keep anyone out of the Hall of Fame. Anyways, off my soapbox. Brasso's playoff records include most consecutive wins in one playoff season, 11 in 1992, most consecutive NHL playoff wins with 14, stretching from May 9th, 92 to April 22nd, 93, and shares the record with several goalies with most wins in one playoff season with 16 in 1992. Brasso okay, holds. Okay, no, that's kind oh, of yeah. a dumb record. Because that just means that you started yeah, every game. You won every game. You won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. So, but I don't think there's that many that have done it. Maybe not. Brasso holds the NHL career record for assists by a goalie with 48, which also leads him to hold the NHL career record for most points by a goalie with 48. Brasso is fourth all-time for NHL regular season wins by an American goalie, first all-time for the most NHL playoff wins by American goalie with 61. So there he is. He's the Wayne Gretzky of goalies. The American Wayne Gretzky of goalies, I guess. Well, but he has the points record. Yeah, he does have the points record. 48. All assists, no goals, though. All right. His rookie card. 1984-85, OPG number 18. PSA 10 has a pop of 32. Gem rate of 6%. Last sale was $600 US dollars via eBay.com and verified in Terapeak on June 21st of this year. So these will be spendy when they come up. Thanks. All right. There we right. go. I'm done. I'm, I'm exhausted. Of, that was I'm, I'm very parched. Yeah. Did a twofer, but you were in goalie heaven. So that was good for you to be able to do twofer there. Okay. It's time for another installment of Rookie Deep Dive, which of course is our effort to help you learn a little bit more about some of the key rookies that are making noise this season in the NHL. I just said noise, funny noise, 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 boys, noise, boys, noise, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As a way uh, to maybe help you decide which ones to chase and which ones you might want to sit out on, even for the time being. We started 
most recently with players that have their series one young guns exclusively, but now try are tiptoeing into the rookie scoring leading leaderboard for the 2023, 24 season. You'll maybe notice, or you have noticed, I, I'm trying to hold out on some of the bigger names until we yeah. get a little bit closer to series two. Cause I think it will be more fun. Yeah. Not, not to do like an Adam Fantilli rookie deep dive and four months later as young guns comes out. <laughs> But and and it also lets us highlight some interesting uh, other rookies to cover in the meantime. So to recap of our most recent rendition, season two, if you call it a rookie deep dive, uh, we covered Matthew Nyes in episode eighty, Luke Hughes episode eighty four, Devin Levi episode one twenty five, Matthew Coronado episode one twenty seven, Dustin Wolf one twenty nine, Ridley Gregg in one thirty one, and then most recently. Marco Rossi last week in episode 133. So we put up another Instagram poll for y'all to vote on and pick our rookie deep dive candidate for this week. And so we had four candidates. Now, um, total, it's a name uh, panicking here because it's a very <laughs> French name, of course. And you, you all know how we do it with uh, French names. Uh, we're pretty awesome at it. You know, hate to brag. Uh, our first candidate was Matthew... Patra, I think I did it. I would have said like Poitras <laughs> if I saw yeah. it. I well, you have to blame Sportsnet because I watch lots of yeah. videos. Yeah. I think it's Patra. Okay. Of the Boston Bruins, then Brock Faber, which is much easier to say. Yes. Yaroslav Askarov, actually, uh, like pronunciation wise, Russian names are very similar to the US. So yep. we never really struggle there. And then uh, Bobby Brink, like a kitchen sink, yep. is very easy to say too. And of course, it's the French name of Matthew Patra. I'm sure I said it wrong. I even phonetically <laughs> spelled it in our notes. I feel like I, I practiced it a lot earlier and I felt like I had it better. So yeah, we'll hear all about it. <laughs> H- had you heard of Mr. Patra? Nope. Before Troy? Nope. <laughs> I'm ready to learn. Yeah. Well, what's made him deep dive worthy is up to a pretty good start. Four goals, three assists for seven points and 14 games played which is currently good enough for 10th place in the rookie points race and tied for fourth amongst rookie in goals. He's a 19-year-old center from Ajax, Canada. I can say Ajax. 5'11", 172 pounds, so not a real big dude. No. Nope. But on the smaller side. He was a second-round pick, 54th overall, by your Boston Bruins in the 2022 NHL entry draft. And he was drafted after basically one season with the Guelph Storm in the OHL, where he had 21 goals, 29 assists for 50 points and 68 games played. After the draft, he returned to Guelph for the 2023-23 season, where he put up 16 goals, added 79 assists for 95 points and 63 games played. So he plays one season in the CHL, gets drafted, goes back to the O for second season. And then uh, last May, Boston signed him to a three-year entry-level contract and invited him to training camp. I think the idea was, well, he would, like they often do with young guys, he'd come to camp, get some ex- kind of that experience, get used to the NHL environment, and then most likely go back to the O for another season. But he played so well in camp that they mm-hmm. decided to keep him around for the opening day roster for which the Bruins get that nine game, I think it is, yep. sort of decision-making period. And he yep. got off to a really fast start there, too, to the point where on October 31st, the Bruins announced that he'd be staying with the team for the remainder of the season, uh, as opposed to returning to Guelph. Like that. <laughs> I feel like you're uh, in pain, like your stomach hurts. Guelph! <laughs> <laughs> it's like you get punched in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing uh, as originally or, so he's not going back as originally planned so i found a kind of interesting quote on mr patois from his scouting report from the hockey writers website we've used them before yep. uh, of course for our greatest player to wear each number and almost greatest player to wear each number segment so here's a quote from jacob barker from dobler dobber prospects now is dobber prospects i see them a lot are they do they have respect or I would like, assume so. I've seen if they're in the hockey writers, they better okay. They better have some respect. I've seen them, I've seen them quoted a lot though. Here's the quote. Although the numbers won't wow you, which is not great, 
Great, <laughs> Great way to start. <laughs> Patwa is a prospect that you do not want to miss. He's incredibly hardworking with a well-rounded skill set that he utilizes effectively in all three zones on the ice. Defensively, his work ethic matched with his high-level knowledge of the game allow him to anticipate opponents' decisions and force turnovers. It is somewhat challenging to project if Patois was going to end up being a star at the next level, but his complete set of tools and work ethic make it easy to see him as a surefire NHLer with lots of two-way upside. I saw a comparison like Claude Giroux. Okay. Now, when we talk about prospects, we and we have in the past, we always want to see that strong pedigree. But because Patois, trajectory to the NHL is so quick, Troy, he doesn't have that like crazy amount of juniors experience or AHL experience. He doesn't, and he's got 37 goals and 131 games played in the O, which is like 0.28 goals per game. So a little bit suspect there in that regard, even though he's more, he's averaged more than a point per game in the, in the OHL. So yeah, there's just not a lot to, it's a little bit like a Slavkovsky situation where there's not a ton to go on. Now the difference here is Patois is not the number one overall pick. So maybe give him a little more rope as, as from that perspective. He's also, I think, undoubtedly benefited from some opportunity in the lineup with the Bruins after losing a couple key forwards this past offseason, like Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. Most recently, Patois has been centering the Bruins' third line, Troy, and has seen some time on their second power play unit. So yeah, I guess in my mind, this is a story that we're going to need to maybe see play out a little bit more to determine if it's just kind of a fun, nice, little story to the kid who's off to a hot start to start the year, or if he can have some lasting impact in the NHL. And if that will, of course, translate to the hobby, there's no NHL cards as of yet for Matthew Patois. He does have his C- CHL cards though, for both 2021 and 2022. So this is his 2021 upper deck CHL star rookie blue parallel. Most recently sold for 32 us dollars. If you're watching on YouTube, it was selling for about eight US on October first, so a lot of steam. You're on mute. Sorry, blows my mind. Thirty two dollars for a raw CHL card of this of Matthew Patois. Patois. Yeah, but I don't know. His name's kind of all over the place, and he is. You know, does have four goals early on. I'm kind of guessing he'll be an extended series release mm-hmm. only because he kind of literally has come out of nowhere. Yeah. I can't imagine he was now a predict does find a way to get guys you've never heard of <laughs> into rookie checklists and, st- and young guns checklist. So maybe it'll be in series two, but I'm going to put my money on extended series if I'm a betting man. So there is Troy rookie deep dive. Awesome. Matthew Patron. All right. Got to make a quick mention for gong show partner and sponsor slab sharks. We, of course, are very grateful to them for their support of our our show. Holy cow, was their booth? And just the entire experience that they had set up at the expo was pretty awesome. Huge step up from last year. And you can really see how much and how fast they are growing. Now, you might be asking, I can see you asking, Troy, why are they growing so much? Well, it's because their weekly eBay auctions have some of the biggest and best hockey cards you'll find anywhere. And their current auction is tonight. So make sure you go to slapsharks.com for a link to the auction. Place your bids. If you're a Canadian hockey cards collector and are not currently using Slab Sharks for their eBay consignment services, well, then Troy and I would recommend that you check them out. They make it very easy to sell your cards on eBay because, while well, they do all the work. You just submit your cards to them and they do the rest. They take all the photos, list them, answer buyer questions, hunt down payment, ship to the U.S. and Canada, therefore exposing your cards to the largest buying pool possible. And then, of course, handle any post-auction issues for complete consignment information, including payout rates, and to get started consigning your cards with Slab Sharks today, check out SlabSharks.com. Happy news! Let's do it. Kind of cool news that Troy Pittsburgh has made the announcement that they are going to retire Yarmir Yager's number 68. I believe this February, yeah, February 18th, Prior to their game against the LA Kings. You know who they're not 
retiring whose number that they should? Tom Brasso. There's a lot of stuff on Tom Brasso should have his number retired by them. But goes back to the people didn't like him. <laughs> I think that's it. I thought I read, though, and I don't know if this is even a Mario Lemieux thing, but if they're trying to be really a little bit stingy on retiring numbers. I think I'm trying to look ahead of my notes because I think I have it in here where I don't think he's played for the Yager has played for them. since like maybe like 2006 or even 2000, something like that. And man, I mean, they've waited a long time. I mean, yeah. That's crazy. Like a no brainer. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the one thing I, I, the athletic did a, like always did a really good deep dive on Brasso like a couple months ago, once he's got announced that he was going to be in the hall of fame. Every one of the players on that championship team said he was the number one reason they won the cup besides Lemieux. So to me, that's just crazy. But yeah, I get you. The Penguins drafted Yager fifth overall in the 1990 NHL entry draft. Do you want to know the first four picks in that draft? (laughs) Let's hear it. I'm ready. ready. So number one was Olin Olin. Okay. Not bad. No, good player. Great player. And his rookie card was hot. You remember yeah. like how big of a deal that was <laughs> back in the 90s? The number two is Peter Nedved. Okay. I, I was a Nedved guy. I remember him. Cannot oh, yeah. say it. Then third is Keith Primo. Had a great NHL yep. career. Then fourth was Mike Ricci. So, I mean, it's not like, like a giant glaring sort of like, I don't know, it would be a bad... Yeah, yeah, um, oh, by the way, too, just to acknowledge again, YouTube, sorry if you're watching. Is there any more ridiculous hair than in this photo? It's uh, the it, this has to be the prime shot that the traveling Yagers, who we've talked about twice now on our show, now this is the third time, which is a group of fans that go around, they each wear a different Yager jersey and they wear wigs with his hair and they go to all his games. Or they, not all his games, they go to some games over in Europe. And they were just over there again because I guess their found one of the founders passed away from cancer. Oh, so they, they did like a tribute over there. And I think Yager nice. like meets with them and talks to them and everything. And it's not just the mullet, it's the poofy bangs. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just really classic. Did. So Yager won two Stanley Cups with the Penguins in 1991. 1992, <laughs> 91, of course, against their North Stars, which was a it was like a kicking a puppy. It was yeah. not a good experience as a Minnesota fan. He won five Art Ross trophies in Pittsburgh as well. And in 1999, with the Penguins, Troy, he won his lone Hart trophy. In total, Yager has played 1,733 career NHL games, only scored 766 goals. He's added 1,155 assists for 1,920. One points, good enough for fourth in NHL history for goals and second for NHL history in points. Uh, speaking, we talked a lot about the Hall of Fame and Tom Barrasso. You aware that Yager is not a Hall of Famer? Yeah, but I I think it's due to a clause that says it says in there I believe something about professional hockey. And with him keep coming out of retirement to play professional over in Europe, I think that can restart the clock on him. And I actually think they're, I have read a story where they're going to start, they might vote on new rules or to fix that issue because he should be in the hall of fame mm-hmm. and it's not like he's going to come back to the NHL. So even though he's playing professional hockey in Europe, I think they're going to try to change that so he, they can get people like Yager in. Well, he does the, to sell tickets for his, yeah. Oh yeah. Cause he owns his team, team right? of course. Yeah. And you're 100% right. It has to do with that playing professional hockey kind of delays his eligibility. And it doesn't seem like he's going to stop doing it anytime soon. I read an article, I guess Lanny McDonald, I think, runs the Hall of Fame. Oh, really? I didn't know that. He doesn't seem to have a lot of sympathy for Yager in this situation. It's kind of odd to me, considering they've made a number of exceptions for Lemieux, for Gretzky, Bobby Orr, right? Youngest selected at 31. I'm not saying that Yager is quite on that level, but he's not really far off of that level no, either. He's a, he's a surefire Hall of Famer. He should be in there. Second most points in the history of the game. <laughs> yeah, 766 goals. It just seems dumb that at this point yeah. he's not in the Hall of Fame. So I would definitely support making an exception for him there. One last question for you on this. So do you think 
that well we can even brought into the hall of fame too do you think either the hall of fame or getting your jersey retired has any kind of hobby bump or hobby impact from everything i've garnered it probably used to but i now i think we're too smart and it should be kind of baked in to their values i don't the number retiring to me doesn't seem like it would matter at all but the hall of fame might have a little bump but a lot of people you got to know he's going to be in the hall of fame at some point maybe it does a little you know five percent bump here and there but I think maybe from like the a long term, like over time, just part of like a total resume perspective, it does. But I agree with you. I don't think you get that. Oh, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's officially a Hall of Fame yeah. now. The price has gone up fifteen percent. So maybe if it's like a borderline guy and gets yeah. in, like the surprise, kind of a surprise, then I bet it does a little more. So Yarmy Yarger is, I guess, most known or main rookie mm-hmm. is a nineteen ninety OPG premiere, PSA ten pop thirty five hundred ninety three. 30% gem rate, last sold for 143 US dollars on November November 13th, down 18% in the past six months, down 12% in the past three months. Kind of interesting. 11,884 of these cards have been graded by PSA. Which you could just do the math. The lot 55 or 3593 pop count with 30% gem rate. There's also just in, in case anyone's wondering, 1,014 BGS 9.5s as well. So very high pop rookie card. Okay, Troy, I want to do a very quick NHL injury update for some key players to right. keep everyone prized. Not a lot of good news so far this year for on the Trevor Zegras <laughs> front. I feel like everything's been negative. <laughs> Is this him getting injured? Is this the actual <laughs> picture? Is. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a terrible face. <laughs> I feel bad laughing at an injury, but man, that is something else. <laughs> and this is like, like fun. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, and it's like it's like they took it from this high camera that they secretly had looking at him. It's kind of funny. Just getting smushed, basically. Zegers has a lower body injury and is on IR, expected out until at least November 17th, which is a few days. I, I, who knows how long he'll be out. Mm-hmm. Still rocking the Slavkovsky try with one goal and one assist <laughs> for two points and 12 games played. Like you said, not a lot of good news. His 2021 Young Gun PSA 10 popped 1,044, down 12% in the past 30 days. 115 US dollars was the last sale. Did you hear about this one yet? A Tage Thompson? Of course I heard. He's on my fantasy team. Upper body injury expected to be out until at least December 2nd. Not good news. For your fantasy team, not good news for the Buffalo Sabres. Sabres fans or hobbyists that have collected Tage Thompson. Up to an okay start. A little bit quiet, maybe, mm-hmm. but very, very games. quiet beginning. And then he kind of picked it up. That first yeah. week it was a little slow. So in 16 games played, he has six goals, six assists for 12 points. Uh again, very much a bummer. His 2017 young gun PSA 10 pop 449. Very low pop. Yep. That down about 16% in the past month, last selling for 209 US dollars. And then just a little bit, we'll add some sprinkling some good news in. Lastly, Jack Hughes' shoulder injury looks to be <laughs> progressing. Good news and as you see him crumpled to the ice in pain with the ref giving him a pat on the back. Saying, it's, okay, it's okay, buddy. It's yeah, okay. okay. He could return as early as Thursday and is now Ooh. officially day to day. So of course, in his 10 games to start the season, he was pretty much on fire. Five yeah. goals, 15 assists for 20 points. And his 2019 Young Gun PSA 10, top 4,083, is down about 12% in the past two weeks, but selling for 321 US dollars on November 14th. That was for a while where these are going for over 400 bucks. Yeah. Yep. Given it's very high pop, very high gem rate. Okay, Troy, kind of time to hit our topic du jour. Or I guess main topic for for this show. I got this idea when we were at the expo, and I was walking around with uh, Neil, our, our special guest in our last episode, Irish Flyers collector who was hunting a McDavid rookie, and he got ended up getting the same one that I'm going to show a little bit later. And we were looking at some of the values, and because I have the card he was looking for, and I knew what I paid for it, yeah, it was down quite a bit. And nope. just kind of knowing how they're how they've started, uh, it just got me thinking throughout the weekend. Well, geez, could now be a decent or good time 
to buy Connor McDavid cards. So, of course, the, the season for the Oilers has not been off to a great start. Uh, I know it's not breaking news, Trent. Uh, at the time of the recording, the Oilers are 4-9-1 and one in 14 games played. They have nine points on the season. That's good enough for seventh in the Pacific Division. And they have the second fewest points in the NHL, only ahead of Troy, your uh, favorite team, the San Jose Sharks. They've already fired their coach and hired McDavid's old juniors coach as a replacement. So now anyone... Uh, affiliating the coaching staff or front office <laughs> seems to have some connection to yep. Connor McDavid. And then when you look at McDavid himself, he certainly has not been horrible, but but to his standard, he hasn't been great either. No. He's only got three goals, nine assists for 12 points and 12 games played. Crazy Troy, he, he's currently 91st in the NHL scoring leaderboard for the 2023-24 season. To me, one point a game puts you at 91st is crazy. It shows you what scoring scoring it has to be up again this yeah, year. Yeah, it's not. It has to be. So, and then I think when you particularly look at three goals in 12 games, very un McDavid like mm-hmm. as well. So, yeah, things have not started out great for McDavid or the Oilers for sure. And again, like I said, it got me thinking about that question is now a good time to buy his cards? So I thought we would unpack that a bit today. Now, we have to make a standard disclaimer, like we always do when we kind of broach these topics, that nothing we say should be considered as buy-sell advice. We do not know if the market's going to go up or down. We never know if a player will go up and down. We will be right as often as, or all wrong as probably more than we're right. But our hope in having these kind of conversations is just to give you maybe some ideas, information or data or bring up questions that you can use to do your own research, do your own thinking and make kind of the right decisions that you want to make for your collection or portfolio, however you term uh, your I guess, uh, assets or cards or however you put it. But that being said, Roe tried the first rule of arbitrage, right? And <laughs> buying appreciable assets is buy low and sell high as collectors though. What's kind of crazy is we often do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, it happens all the time in in the hobby. Like when a player's hurt and isn't producing, the values go down because demand is much less. Like nobody wants to buy the card. But then conversely, what we see all the time, we saw at the beginning of the year Jack Hughes, when we're now with Elias Pedersen, when a player goes scorched earth and starts to, you know, pile up the stat sheet, all of a sudden, demand goes way up and the prices follow. So, you know, to a large degree, the hobby really operates on buy high, sell low, <laughs> which is, again, it's sort of counterintuitive to the mm-hmm. the concept of what most people like is whether you're collecting or and we've said this a lot of times, too, or you're a flipper. I think most people like the idea of, well, I'd rather buy a card for $100 and have it be worth 200 versus the opposite of that. Yeah no matter my intentions to sell it or not. And I'm not sure like the exact psychology as to why that that we kind of do buy high and sell low. And it's almost like a flaw in our brains. And, And I think the, to my best understanding or my best guess, the reason is when we, we kind of take, like use recency bias to an extreme and whatever's happening today, we sort of project forever, right? So if Austin Matthews has three hat tricks in a week, like uh, part of us thinks that, well, he's just going to score a hundred goals mm-hmm. that it, that it, it just can't be maybe a good week. And then next week will be different. So it's like it, whatever is happening right now becomes object permanence into the future for, for that player. And so it's logical then to assume given the start of the Oilers, given the start McDavid has had, that his market will be down, which it is, and where maybe some people might now be wondering, well, it's sort of the, the end of the McDavid era or the, uh, it probably isn't, you know, <laughs> not to jump to the, the end of the bit a little bit, but, but yeah, because, you know, it's basically what, two weeks? And now all these questions are coming out about him and his team. So to give you guys an idea of like what's going on in the market, you look at his young gun PSA 10 popped 2,730 last sale on November 13th, 2,577 us 
down about 9% in the past month and down about 12% in the past three months. And like you said, it's not just his young guns. Uh, here's a picture of one of my cards. It's a 2015 OPG update, McDavid Rainbow Foil PSA 10. This is the card I was mentioning that our good friend Neil was looking for that I own. So I got it in a trade this past summer. And at the time, so this is a couple months ago, the valuation was like 500 bucks. Well, this card last sold and October 19th. So about a week into the season for 340 us. So down pretty significantly from where it was trading at or selling at a few months before. So you have McDavid off to kind of a rough start. Now, a lot of people think he's injured and might be Ooh. playing through it. Some stuff a little bit like we had with our guy Kaprizov last year. The Oilers are terrible. They can't make a save to make their life. They've got rid of their coach. <laughs> they've got rid of their goalie. The market is down and it's kind of creating this whole environment where uh, pretty much across the board, all of his cards are down and we could go through a ton more examples, but they would just sort of all draw to yeah. the same conclusion. So Troy, that brings us back to the question is now a good time to buy McDavid, right? If we, if the idea is to buy low and then either keep high or sell high down the road. So I'm going to kind of go through my methodology for sort of breaking down the answer to that question for myself, and then we'll get your input as well. First of all, I think you have to acknowledge there's a big difference between a good time to buy and necessarily the best time to buy. Like now might very well be a good time to buy Connor McDavid, but that doesn't mean a month from now his prices might be lower. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like coming around on the buying side, very similar to the philosophy that we've been talking about on the, on the selling side in that take your win. Mm -hmm. right if your goal if you're selling a card is to wait and try to get a record sale every time you sell a card you're going to sell very few and conversely if you're going to wait till the mcdavid market or another player's market completely bottoms out i think most of the time you only really know that after it's too late uh, so it's really hard to if you're really good at pinpointing that then Congratulations. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> and so I look at a situation like this, like we're at the expo, there's a bunch of good cards and they're all down a little bit. If you believe in McDavid long term, if you still think that, hey, this is a blip in the radar, he's a little bit hurt. The Oilers can't be as bad as they've played and bigger and better and brighter things are coming. I, I'm sort of the mindset of take the win. Do you look at it the same way? And not oh, worry about it yes. goes down a little bit more. No, 100%. I would, too. Okay. And then I, I think the rest of it comes down to more, like, bigger or long-term questions. Like, do you still believe in him as a player? Which is really hard not to. I mean, I, I don't think even though he's whatever in the scoring leaderboard, nobody's going to argue he's still not the best player in the NHL. He's only 26 years old. He should have maybe 10 years of prime hockey left which is crazy to think about and the numbers and stats that he should pile up but but honestly and i this isn't news for our show and i, I know i i guess try i get a little i'm a little conflicted on the long-term prospects part of me thinks and this is probably that recency bias thing because the oilers stink right now that i assume they're always going to stink and and it's hard to conceive of him being in a situation to to win ultimately. But then I think, man, so much can happen in the next 10 years. And it, he's such a good player that eventually he will win. Uh, does that make sense to you? Makes complete sense. Plus, yeah, I remember, too, they got the whole the new head coach. And what happens? They win. McDavid scores a goal. So the window might be passed <laughs> even. I, I think there truly is something to do with like getting new coaching in, and especially – I mean, McDavid, what else do you want? You've gotten your junior coach, your agent, <laughs> anyone else, any goalies you played with as a peewee or a mite or an Adam, I guess, in, in Canada that we can get in here for you because it seems like they're building the team with what he wants. Wait, wait, what's an Adam? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a, I don't, if it's like in the U.S., it would be like mites, squirts, peewees. Oh, they gotcha. have, I think Adam is like your small ones. I can't remember the rest of them for Hockey Canada, but. Adam, I apologize, Steve, Bobby, if, uh, and Joe. apologize if anyone can hear uh, my lovely dog in the background howling away. No, I can't, can't hear. The one thing, though, and this is where I go back and maybe on the little bit of a negative side. 
as good as he is, I mean, think of like, and boy, I want to make this point without being too negative here. I think of Marcel Dion at the Expo. Yeah. Here's a guy with 732 goals. No. Yep. Mia stats galore. Yep. What is he like? Six all time in goals and in points. Yep. And he's a big deal in one respect, but he has almost no hockey hobby relevancy to the point where he can sit at his booth and people walk by, by and it was our third show and we never know. He, we haven't known. He's just been sitting there the whole time. Yeah. And there's so, never like a huge crowd around him either. I mean, there'd be six, seven people at a time, maybe. But that's you'd have tables with 20 people around <laughs> looking at cards. So it was, it was a really weird dichotomy. But again, though, I mean, how, out of like 100 people that walked by, how many do you think knew that that was Marcel Dion? Yeah, good point. If they didn't read the banner. But the banner wasn't even that big either. It was kind of... Well, once you notice it, then yeah. it kind of makes sense. But again, yeah. getting back to the point, I think we have to acknowledge that if this guy never wins a Stanley Cup, it's he's not going to be like uh, Mount Rushmore on the hockey hobby. At least I don't think so. Do you? I mean, do you think it's conceivable? No, I where... think you. I think you have to win a cup. Just it's there's so much cachet that goes with that. It's just you have to win a cup, or else you're just one of those greatest players that could never win the cup. Like Barkley. Okay, help me right? understand this <laughs> about hockey because I'm not comfortable. Well, I actually need help kind of sorting this out in my own mind. I grew up playing basketball. I, I I feel like I have a much more of a feeling for the game as a player than, of course, I do with hockey. In basketball, it's almost inconceivable, probably because there's only five players on the court or, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe that's a factor that a guy like Michael Jordan could never win an NBA championship. It's just, it's not, you can't be that good and not win a championship. Do you think the, the same can exist for hockey or it does exist for hockey? I, you know, here's, yeah, I don't even get that hockey, even though it's like six on the ice, right on a team. It's so, this is not terrible. Hockey is such a random game. It is. It's like, you look at the analytics 40% 40% of hockey can be chalked up to luck or, ver- or puck luck, as we want to call it. And you can be the greatest offensive threat in the world and have terrible goalie, <clears throat> like Edmonton does. So you really need everything to click. Where I think basketball, I feel like individuality can get you a long ways. I mean, well, you just have much a- more of an impact as yeah. an individual. It's like, I think baseball is another great kind of example to make in that you can have players like. Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, who by all accounts are like you look at like what Mike Trout's of war, he's one of the greatest players of all time. No, yeah. from that perspective, and Shohei is just doing like Babe Ruth type things, and their their team is horrible. Yeah. And so it's like you can be that good and not almost will your team to victory. So in your mind, is hockey closer to baseball in that regard or closer to basketball where I will contend. And I do strongly believe it's inconceivable to be one of the top four or five greatest players of all time and not lead your team. to win. Yeah. I would say it's closer to baseball. It's, it's, it's you, even if you can be an individual and be a great player, you still need every other piece to click. It's, it's, I don't think you can do it all by yourself. And I was just, I was looking up like greatest players did not win a cup. And the list is pretty impressive, <laughs> like of these great players that never won a cup. Well, who's on the list? Well, Marcel right, Dion, right? Yeah. Guess that that's who pops up from Google. If you just type out greatest AHL player to never win a cup, it's like Marcel Dion. But yeah, it's uh Dion, Aginla, Adam Oates, Matt Sundin, Howard Chuck, Mike Gartner, Roberto Luongo, Peter Statsny. Pierre Turgeon, Gilbert Perot, and that's this list. Yeah. So again, that's my one hesitancy on on McDavid because I'm just mm-hmm. not convinced that. You know, and I think it's relevant because man, like he's a good. Now the card we we're just looking at is like a five hundred dollar card, which isn't insignificant. But you can yeah. spend ten grand on a McDavid mm-hmm. rookie, like nothing. And if you're expecting that to be back up to maybe 20 grand or 15 grand again at some point. I mm-hmm. think a, a Stanley Cup has to be yep. in the 
a, a factor a factor in that and it's a little scary to me that like from your opinion that he could be technically one of the top four or five greatest players of all time and that might not be enough yep. to get him a a stanley a stanley cup okay so let's kind of answer the question for ourselves kind of all the factors considered where the market's at his start which is fine but not mcdavid like and maybe a little bit of injury impacting that as well the horrible team situation the fact he's still only 26 years old and still probably the best player in the not probably i think almost inarguably the best player Mm -hmm. in the nhl if you're a guy who's interested in mcdavid you want him in your collection you want to have some rookies you want to invest whatever your goal is uh in your mind is now a good time to buy do you think Troy? i would but it's gonna have to be quick i think the window's gonna close very fast I okay. think I that's what that's my thought. I think there's a little window right now. And if, if it's interesting to you, go for it. But I think it's going to close fast. I think I just I, there's always something to do with new coaches. And he's got to get mad at some point and just kind of go off, I would think. <laughs> but we'll yeah. see. Well, I, I think it's a I actually think it's a pretty good time to buy, too. Now, again, does that mean we can't predict the future? We can't no. predict that it's going to go up. But. I look at like this card that we're showing on the screen. We're you know, being then around three, 350 bucks, pop 122. Yep. Cool looking card uh, for a, a player of his caliber. Um, man, to be, you know, because I think part of it too is as cool as it was a couple years ago during the pandemic, a lot of these cards were out of reach. Yeah. The card was a thousand dollars at one point. Yep. And, and so, you know, I think one of the benefits of, where the hobby's at and maybe where some of these players are at is that some of these cards are a lot more attainable now and money making aside if, if you're if you love the hobby and you love cool cards and you want to own cool cards i guess that's where i'm coming from at this and that uh i'm kind of excited about a lot of different players right now including mcdavid that it's a decent time to buy to take those wins because stuff like what we're watching is is a lot more attainable and affordable uh, listen what you guys think so message us on social media love to hear your thoughts comment on the video on youtube um, and uh, we'd love to learn from you as well okay we're gonna switch gears new product releases right we have another checklist our reprieve from new products <laughs> it's done it's over it's crazy to think that we actually Ooh. needed a break but we did 2022 23 stature checklist is out we're gonna break it down for everybody now, if you're thinking, didn't we just have a stature release? Well, <laughs> we did. You're right. 2021-22 stature came out on August 16th, putting the expected November 22nd release of the 2022 stature just a barely over three months since the most recent one. What was the other artifacts? Was artifacts the one that came out pretty close together? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But again, we've talked about this. They're this is going to happen, especially what's going on with Series 2 and how they're just trying to get stuff, or we feel they're trying to get stuff out the door as fast as possible before all the, the backlog stuff. 100%. Okay, Dre, so I know Statue is one of your favorite sets. Yeah. So what, what's your thoughts on the proximity of releases? Is it too soon? Are you like, geez, the last one just came out? Or yeah. are you like, hey, I can't get enough of Statue, bring it up? I love Statue, bring it on. Does anyone okay. really care about the 22, 23 rookies right now? I'm, I'm interested to see values of stature of these rookies, just kind of from what we've seen in the past. Well, I'm interested to get your impact or your input on the checklist here and some of the yeah. maybe nuggets from the set. So here we are. The next stature is on our doorstep. So we're going to dig in and see what's changed, see what's the same and what's all new for 2022, 23 stature. So the base configuration is the same from last year. We have 100 vets and legends in the base set and 100 rookies. So what's your thought on the overall base? It looks like to me that they've put kind of like the the background image a little bit more, too. Where you have yeah. Like, you have like Austin Matthews, like cousin, <laughs> staring behind Connor <laughs> McDavid here in this image. Well, I'm trying to find a. It's sad. if we, I, Looking at this and without having a, a picture of what last year's were, this looks very similar. But yeah, I, I think there's more like in the background, like intricacy. That's yeah, what well, I, I found this is 
Oh, sorry. Uh, look there. If you look at YouTube, this is a Pekka, but this is like a photo variation or one of those. And it's a parallel. But, oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah. it. I saw they are going to do the same thing. And um, so, yeah, it does look. I, I I have not been ever disappointed with the stature design. I love the design of the cards. I think they're fantastic. I kind of feel like 2021, the set that came out three months ago, is a little bit cleaner, though. Maybe, yeah, because I don't think I don't remember. Like, I don't stature to me. I don't want the people in the background, like the fans. And yeah. I gotta see what's going on with that. I don't know what you call it. The artwork at the in the background too. I'd like want to see a tribal it. tattoo. Like the card got a tribal tattoo. Well, it, it reminds me of the French the flower or what's that thing called? The three point. Fleur de, yeah, fleur the fleur. That's what it kind of reminds me of. The fleur de fleur. Yeah. Yeah, that's not it, but okay. So yeah, I, I, it's hard to get a bad design stature card. Yeah, but I think I preferred the twenty twenty one base design to this one. So there's a hundred rookies on the checklist as well. Now we talked about two. I, I yeah. I'm a big fan when there's fifty on the checklist because when it goes up to hundred, you're just gonna get a lot more duds. Yeah. In your box, whether it be like base cards or number parallels or autos. But here's where stature, I think, is starting <laughs> to get a little bit off the rails. Are you, are you saying the wheels kind of falling off as they go down the track? I don't. I, don't I, I really want to get your. I think I want to get your opinion on this because it's the whole like yeah. base cards, then photo variants, base design variants, yeah. and base design and photo variants. So I went and did some counting. I'm a counter Troy. Yep. So they're all numbered, and there's. It, it feels like there's like a million parallels and variants yeah so in total there's either 17 parallels of the base variants and parallels of the variants yeah not to confuse anyone and here's here's where i think that the conversation gets really interesting because for every base card there they, there basically is now three separate one of ones there's the one one for the base and then the one of one for each variant yeah when you see that, like, Maddie Beneers 101 on eBay, you, you you almost have to ask yourself with stature. Well, I mean, just you, this could be a broader conversation as a whole, too. If it's really a, like, one of one of three. Yeah. This is this is the Panini problem, right, where they were coming out with yeah. 18 one of ones in one set for whatever, basketball, football. And... I'm not a fan of it. I think one ones I would rather have just one 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 where I think where I don't mind what Stature is doing if they is I don't mind the variant like the photo variant and stuff. But a lot of times, like if you look at this Pekka, I'm showing it again. I think this is one is this is a photo variant or a design variant too, maybe. But sometimes on the photo variant, it's just a zoomed in picture of the base photo. Yeah. That's me. No, do a whole different photo if you're gonna really do this base whatever they got the base and then you got your photo design variant i want a different photo i don't want a zoomed in picture of of the uh, of the base photo i so i don't and i don't mind all the different colored parallels but i do i'm not a fan of the different one-on-ones and stuff like that i think that's manufacturing scarcity and it's yeah i have a theory that it's been selling well and they need probably has in, increase the number of boxes but if you don't want to increase the checklist, how do you do that? Yeah. You add like 17 million different variants, but I just think it's too much. Like I don't, it, it's, it's, it's just confusing. It's like, yeah. you have a photo variant, a design variant, and then a yeah, photo, photo and, and design. variant. <laughs> yeah. And this was, I think this was, this was introduced last year, right? If I remember right, that was the first year they did. Yeah. The... Yeah. Cause I don't remember it before that. And I guess it kind of like, the, how, how would I term is like it's all about like distinction without a difference right mm. there's just not enough of a difference to make it feel meaningful yeah to be as as a part of of the set yeah so I, then, I, I I agree with you I agree with you on that you know for for how awesome the set is and you'll get to it but the patches how they've gotten just ridiculous this part just it's, it's I'm not a big fan of what, what they're doing here but I get it. I totally get it, but I, I still don't like three one on ones. Of, I mean, I I know what they're doing, but I it's one of those things. It just cheapens the yeah. 
non-auto, non-memorabilia cards. Because if you pull Matt Boldy out of 10, it's like, well, there's really like four of these. Because <laughs> there's the base one. Yeah. Again, there's the photo variation. There's the design variation. Then there's the yeah. photo and design variation. So it's just, it's like you have to multiply everything by four. Yeah. I guess is a way that I look at it. But okay, we'll get off that little mm-hmm. soapbox. Not a big fan. Beyond the base and its bazillion variations, we have base <laughs> autos and base rookie autos uh, as well. Uh, and don't worry for all you variant fans. There's tons of variants yeah. for autos as well. Uh, yeah, again, you've got more of like the faded background in these. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't love the design as much, but yeah. it's still not bad. Uh, rookie autos are out of 199 or 99 for base and out of 49 for base rookie photo variant autographs. I also don't like card names that, yeah, that have like seven words. <laughs> yeah, that's a mouthful. All uh, right, get to the next uh, one. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, this is where <laughs> you got to give the folks at Upper Deck a lot of props yeah. on stature because they've really, really upped their game yeah. in the patch auto, rookie patch auto area um, the patches have just been ridiculous in the last couple of years and actually they've kind of gone the opposite way when it comes to patches where there's still some variance but a lot of the patch cards if you go through the checklist are really low serial numbered like mm. out of three or out of five i think the highest i saw was out of 20 okay where you'll see in a lot of sets like with premiere or ultimate collection you know, they'll start like with the jersey swatches out of like 399 kind of deal and have RPAs out of 99. So it, it almost seems like that maybe the value in stature is, is in the scarcity is becoming mm-hmm. these patch autos, which are pretty awesome. And again, what makes it unique and what we learned from Upper Deck that stature fits in that chromium class of products where you have lure. OPG Platinum and Stature. It's well, I think that there's some. Are there patch autos in Allure? Or just there was. Well, I know there what there have been in the past. Or ah, uh, they've had SWAT or like Jersey pieces. It, it's it's whatever it is of the yeah. of that family of products, the Chromium products. It's the best patches. Yeah, you'll find in, in Stature. Yep. Now there are some vets and legends players that have patch autos like Kimuslani OV. Austin Mustache, AM34, mm-hmm. Eric Lindros, Peter Forsberg. Interesting though, and actually, I'm again. I think this is a good thing. Ultimately, yeah, I agree. The big, big picture bad for current release is there's no McDavid, Gretzky, Lemieux, or Yager patch up. I, there's, I, there's some, I, I was gonna say I don't agree with the no McDavid. I wish they. Sh- I think he should be in there, but the other ones I'm fine with. You think that because he's a current player yep. and, and re- okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad that they're taking a break from Gretzky. Now, there are a couple Gretzky autos, I think, but and McDavid autos, but they're pretty hard to yeah. get. There's three new inserts in Stature, and I kind of like how they did this, too. One is a Legends uh, insert. Then you got one for current veterans, current players, and one for rookies. So we'll start on the Legends. Dignified is the name. This looks like a... To me, I... Th- I see this. It looks like it should be the box cover of like it a like a hobby yeah. box. This is what the cover should look like. Oh, I know. This is probably the next SP Legends, whatever it is. This is going to be the cover. You think so? No, I don't. <laughs> really called Stature Dignified. Stature Dignified. Stature for all legends. <laughs> kind of cool product. Yeah. So base is one out of five bo- uh, packs or boxes. There's six parallels to it, including a black 101. There's an auto version as well with four parallels, including a black 101. There's 17 vets on that checklist for autos. And then there's an auto patch version with 17 players on it that are, again, this is like where the the auto patches get really Mm -hmm. tough. It's either out of three or 101. I like that, right? Because that's a tough to get card. And then on the vets side, there's splendid skaters. New vets insert, 25 players on that checklist. Same kind of deal as with Dignified. There's five parallels, including Black 101, an auto version with 
12 players on it on the checklist. Now, this is where there is a McDavid auto, which is out of 15. And then four parallel, and then there's four parallels on the auto with the, including a black 101. And then there's an auto patch again with 12 players as well, either out of three or just one one. And then finally, oh, I can't wait to get your opinion on this one. I stared at this card. <laughs> oh, look at that. Or I love these. I love like the intellectual exercise of being flummoxed by a card where I can sit and stare at it for like a half hour and not figure out if I like it or not. Like I can convince myself that it's completely awesome. And then I'm like, nah, it's, it's yeah, not going to work. On the- wow. I have to see it in person. I'm, I don't know about the background. I kind of dig how they did it. Like it's almost like paint. Yeah. I, I did. That's what I thought too. It, it <laughs> kind of has that like, and now do you think Wonderkind is a um uh Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso, Ru- Ted Lasso that's what Ru- that's what I first thought of. It was the Wonder Kid. And I will say this this patch is sick. It's the Buffalo, it's the sick Buffalo's eye. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. So Wonderkind highlights the top 50 rookies from the checklist. Whether this card is like huge, like huge chase or flop, I love when they take risks. Yeah, like this. Nonetheless, I think it's pretty awesome. I agree with you. I want to see it in person. My hope is it's better in person than it yeah. is in images. And then I'm sure I'll be all in at that point. Of the 50 rookies, there's 36 players on the auto version of the checklist, and then 35 players of the patch auto, like the one that we saw on YouTube. Uh, out of 24 on the high end, and out of six on the low end. There's a lot of update cards, which kind of makes sense because they there's the 2021 set was problematic, Troy. Mm-hmm. So there's 321 uh, update cards in total. And I don't know yeah. about you, but I'm starting to get conflicted on update cards just because, like, in a lot of boxes I've been opening. Uh, what was the. Well, the you box pulled like that, a two year old one, didn't you? Like yeah. And that's happened to me. Like, like I keep pulling like 2019 rookies. That happened yeah. to me in credentials. I think it happened to me in another set, and it just happened over the weekend at the expo. And, and I, I guess I would I would be happy if it was like an amazing rookie from two years ago. But there's still something about when you buy like a 2021 box, yeah. or 2022, 23 box, and your rookie is from three years ago. I I, I agree with you 100. I always think that with update cards, they should be an extra card, like a bonus. Yeah, I like that. That's what I think they should do with them, but write that down for when we start. It up. <laughs> That's just me. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of recap quickly, sort of my okay. feelings about looking to the checklist. Then we'll get yours. On the positive side, the designs are always great. The patches are ridiculous. Uh, I think they need to like we need to check some of the variations, variants. It's too confusing, and I worry there's too many one on ones. Yep. Um. I, uh, that, I'm on board. Your thoughts are you a yeah. buyer? You're going to buy some personal boxes? I will. I will buy some personal boxes. I don't know when. I actually haven't. I wanted to. I This made me think yeah. I need to look at 21, 22 box prices, too, to see what those are doing, if they've come down a little bit. I didn't. Uh, what I did see is a lot of good stature cards at the Expo. I didn't see a lot of stature boxes floating around. Did you? It was one I don't remember seeing a lot. Maybe they were there and I just missed them. No. But but agree with your take on everything. I love the design. I always like the design. We'll see how this one looks in person. I'm not big a fan of like with the fans in the background. Um, I can live with the artwork. I think that's pretty cool. I think it fits the vibe. Patches are awesome, like you said. Not a fan of the one one too many one ones. I can live with all the other variations and parallels and all that fun stuff. But yeah. So I'm excited. I want to see it. November 22nd. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I've, it was a presale like 150 or 160 US. I forgot to. I uh, can look while you. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll start with PWCC if you want to look at that. All right. I uh, need to mention PWCC quick. Of course, Gong Show Partner Sponsor. Thank them for their support. A few reminders before we get into our previews that the November premiere auction ends tonight. There's two hockey cards on the auction, both uh, very cool cards. A 1979 OPG Wayne Gretzky PSA 8 
1951 Parkhurst Gordy Howe rookie PSA 6 that has the PWCCE IPO rating, putting the card in the top 15% of all PSA 6 copies. So be sure to log on to PWCCMarketplace.com to check out those cards and place uh, your bids. Probably have to beat Troy. He's willing to go, I've heard, into six figures for each card, but we'll see. <laughs> I, uh, update I'm on stature. stature. Slash update one thirty nine ninety five US okay. at David Adams. Okay. Also remember, PWCC has a special grading deal right now with Rock Card submitted through their vault, or you submit to their auctions where you can get them graded by SGC for only fourteen US dollars. You just ship the, the cards to them, and they take care of all the rest. Really good deal. It's very nice because then you don't have to ship it to get graded, and then get it back, and then yeah. ship it. PWCC, you can just do it all at once. Last little reminder is after our fall expo break, Jeremy Lee and I will be back at it this Sunday night on Jeremy's YouTube channel, Sports Cards Live at 8 30 Central Time for our weekly PWCC auction hockey watch party. Hope to see you all there in the chat. It's very fun. Can't wait to do it again. But Troy, it is Thursday. And it's now a tradition where we pick out our favorite vintage and modern cards in the current PWCC weekly auction to highlight and learn more about. And as we always do, we're going to start with our favorite vintage cards. And I'm going to go with a card that I actually did last week. <laughs> kind of a first. That's a little bit different flavor. Oh, yeah. You did the test, right? Last week. Yep. This one's a 1966 Tops Bobby Orr rookie in person auto, PSA 3.5, auto grade of eight. So, again, I realized I featured a Bobby Orr USA test mm. rookie last week which was kind of unique in that it was from that USA test set, but I also can pass up another unique or rookie. And of course this one is autoed by Sir Bobby himself. Now I'm not sure if a uh, or was ever knighted. <laughs> not even a, is that like a thing in Canada? Do they knight people? They do um, in England. I, knew, I don't know about yeah. Canada. I kind of like calling him Sir Bobby though. So. <laughs> oh, and it's funny. It's like I go into my notes and to get a little insight into how my, warped mind works so as i was thinking of the notion of sir bobby i spent like a half hour trying to research if he ever was knighted by the queen of england <laughs> and i could not find anything to, to you gotta be a that. citizen don't you i think you have to be a citizen oh. of the uk so i just figured we could do it so <laughs> like sir bobby half seated as the knight of the gong show, would it be a folding table <laughs> if, if not around the gong show? Be a folding, folding table? table, missing a leg or like gong show table, right? One, sure yeah, it. one leg's too short and it's kind of flipped over. Okay, back to this uh, beauty 1966 Tops Bobby Orr Auto PSA 3.5. Now, you might be asking yourself, Troy, how rare is a 1966 Tops Bobby Orr Auto? I found 17 autoed versions of this card that had ever sold for the card letter sales history dating back to 2013. Hmm. So not super common to find one on a public, I guess, sales market that is autoed. Now the card itself at first glance looks a lot better than a PSA 3.5. It's got pretty good centering, uh, decent corners. Centering is like really tough on this card too. I mean, this yeah. is a beautifully centered card. And the edges are, are good. The print quality seems great. Colors are, the image is crisp. The colors are nice. But when you look closely, there's kind of a big flaw. Yeah. It, starting right under his chin, by Sir Bobby's chin there, there's a crease that goes all the way down to the bottom, which is a big bummer. And I'm assuming that that's sort of the lion's share of yeah. why I got the three and a half grade. Now, so as far as like flaws and vintage cards go, Troy, where do creases rank in your scale of flaws i can live with versus flaws that i just can't get past i don't want it i hate i hate creases you're anti-crease okay. i'm anti-crease unless it, i mean unless it's like a 1911 where the only chance i ever have of owning one is to have it have a crease so it's cheaper but yeah i so like on this one you would maybe prefer rounded yes. corners yes over. i could live with i could live with rounded corners over the and have no crease the other thing that really puzzled me about this card is that auto grade of eight. Mm -hmm. I'm not an auto grader, of course, but man, eight is low. You hardly ever see auto grade as eight, and usually it's yeah. like half the auto is off the card. Now, I, this is, looks like it was a thicker pen, which I yep. understand, 
and there's a few kind of light spots, but well, I wonder, do they knock them for coming outside the TV here or whatever the border? But the card was never meant to be on them, so I know. And actually, Bobby does sign it in probably the best spot on the card. I mean, it's not like he like signed it like right over his face, yeah, or anything like that. So, I'm my point being on this is that I wouldn't personally let the auto grade of eight um distract me from buying this card i think to me the auto is just fine it's legible it's not like it's half dated or anything like that so i found that a little puzzling Uh, are you do you do you think that that auto grade eight in this case is a big deal no (laughs) i i don't think auto grades in general are a big deal I'd, i'd love to have like somebody from a grading company Come on the show and actually explain auto grades to us yeah. at some point. Because I just don't right, get it. Yeah, right now I think you just make it up. Okay, so now I'm interested in your thoughts on this card in general. Or just do you like vintage like rookie cards that are autoed like this? Or do you I, rather a, I, 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 ra- I think I'd rather have it without the auto? I wanted because the argument would be state. that it's not like today where they have specific variations of autos for so the player there is no option out of a pack to get a bobby or auto at the time of course but uh, i actually don't mind it for older vintage cards like this now try this specific card is not yet sold publicly it does seem like that the range for or rookie autos they sell from anywhere from like 2500 to 10,000. you you're not going to find like a psa 3.5 with an eighth auto grade so i couldn't find an exact comp but given the crease, and I do think the one thing where the auto grade of eight, even though I don't think the auto is necessarily bad, at least from my um, visual appeal perspective, is it'll probably lower the value a little bit because that'll be a turnoff mm-hmm. sure, to some people. So I'd probably expect this card to go on the lower end of that 2,500 to 10,000 range. You never know, though. We might be surprised. And if anything, it makes it a good opportunity to own a uh, Sir Bobby or Rookiano, which uh, like we covered, only 17 have ever sold publicly. So a pretty rare opportunity to do that. You got a current bid? 3,100 US. Well, there goes my theory. <laughs> the lower end of the range for 2,500 US. So yeah. All right. You got the next one. All right. I got the next one. 1951 Parkhurst, Alan Stanley, rookie, number 94, PSA 6. So I went with this one again. It's Park Parkers, which we've talked about a billion times. We love them. We did a master class on them, but it's really the player that jumped out more than anything. Alan Stanley. Never heard of him. Didn't know who me he neither. was. Yep. And so it immediately intrigued me. And when I do when I when I get these names, I look them right up in hockey reference. And if I see Hall of Fame, I'm usually going to do the person. And this guy is in the Hall of Fame. So I am in. And Again, we love Parkies. We've gushed about them many times. And I just wanted to, again, look at this card. So it's a PSA 6. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Again, Parkies are the tinier ones. They're not the normal size we're used to today. It won't be perfect, obviously, just due to the grade. But it does look really good. Like the centering looks great left to right. It looks really nice. Top to bottom, I'm not 100. Probably a little more. Probably a little white, off. But... White, yeah, white space down here at the bottom. But corners and edges, I mean, there might be some slight, oh, way too close for my YouTube people. Um, corners are a little bit rounded somewhere there, but not that much. I mean, this definitely looks really nice for being how old it is. Now, color of the player obviously looks really good. I've seen some examples online I looked when I was researching this where this is like completely faded. So Yeah, a lot one, of them can be faded. Yeah, this coloring of the player himself looks good absolutely fantastic but you know again you you keep seeing that psa 6 grade well now you look at the picture and what's going on you'll see why obviously there's big couple big fish eyes that you'll see you also see there's kind of i don't know what you want to call it missing black i guess in the background and some white up here and i went and looked at other copies they seem to all have this just some on some copies it's more pronounced do you know do you know what caused fish eyes I don't. I don't know. Especially on these cards where it's almost like it has like to, dust on the plate or something like Yeah, or air like, like air gets in between or the paint yeah. or something like that. 
But again, like I've seen other copies, they all have kind of some of these deficiencies. I have seen some without the fish eyes though. So that's, um, you can find copies or they're more or less prominent. You don't see them as, as big imperfections. Like this one's pretty noticeable. So fish yeah. eyes drive you crazy. This probably isn't your card, but I could live with it because the picture itself is just great. And well, that goes all, back to that whole trade-off thing in vintage cards yeah. where you're out on creases. Some people might be like, give me a crease. I can't stand fish eyes. And yep. you always have those trade-offs in vintage cars. And it's just a matter of what you can live with and what you can't. Yep. And then down here at the bottom left, too, you see this little red mark. It looks like somehow when they were printing down here, something got there. So that's another thing to notice. But again, great card. Looks great. PSA 6. So hopefully it's halfway affordable, which I think it might be <laughs> when I was doing the research. And then again, Alan Stanley. Didn't even know who he was, so I looked him up. Hall of Famer, four-time cup winner, three-time NHL second all-star team selection. Played 1,244 NHL games over a 21-season NHL career. Scored 100 goals, 330 assists for 433 points. So I started doing the research, and I saw the teams he played for. He's played for the Rangers, the Blackhawks, the Bruins, the Maple Leafs. I'm like, holy cow, is this going to be like a guy that played for all original six? But then the last one was the Flyers. So he played one year with the Flyers at the very end when they were an expansion team. Well, that really stood out to me because it got me to think, I wonder how many players have a 1951 Parker's card that played on any team that wasn't an original six team. Mm, that's a good one. You have to do some research on that. His nickname, this is great, nicknamed Snowshoes and Silent Sam for his slow plotting skating style. However, he was a stay-at-home defender and an important part of the Leafs teams, which won four Stanley Cups in six years in the 60s. So go get them snowshoes, I guess. I don't know what the, just love that nickname. PSA 6 pop of this card is 36. There are 274 total graded copies of this card at PSA, I should say. There are yeah. 105 cards graded higher than a PSA 6. So just to give you a little bit idea where, where the grading falls. Now, Josh, here's this. I'm uh, always curious to me. This exact card sold on September 3rd of this year via the PWCC auction for 180 US dollars. So I always, I don't know if there's a great way to find out if it was unpaid and that's why it went back in or did someone buy it? Somebody just flipped it. Trying to know. flip it. Um, current bid fifty four U S dollars. Hall of Famer nineteen fifty one Parkers. Yeah, pop thirty six. You could have it for one hundred eighty bucks. That'd be fantastic. Like a, less than like a Dawson Mercer. <laughs> Crazy. All right, the last uh, vintage card is a, a stretch. Try right? <laughs> I mean, right out of the game. Nineteen ninety six Black Diamond Patrick Waugh run for the cup out of a hundred PSA seven. Well, the, the saddest part for me about putting a 1996 card as a vintage card is the year I graduated high school. So <laughs> you're vintage calling myself old. <laughs> this card at PSA seven is a pop two with one graded higher. Hard to look at a card like this. And not think of Frank Porco, huh? I know this is right up the Porco yeah, alley. Frank and Frank. it's like, I still hate horizontal cards in the PSA holder. I wish they could fix that, but that's me. One of our best episodes ever was Frank's Masterclass on 90s Hockey Inserts. Way back, episode 67, Troy. So go back, check that out if you missed it. I think by many like 90s inserts aficionados, the 96 Black Diamond Run for the Cup cards are viewed as one of the best or most desirable cards for that era. In card letter sales history, Troy, I can only find 59 total sales wow. for 1996 Black Diamond Run for the Cup cards going all the way back to 2007. So there's 20 cards in the set, 59 total public sales. All 20 cards are serial numbered out of 100. Tons of legendary players on the checklist, including Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Yager, Forsberg, Iserman, Sackick, Messier, Bure, Solani, and of course, Patrick Waugh. There's two other goalies that had uh, one of these cards for 96. That was John Van Beesbrook and Curtis Joseph. Of course, the main draw of the set, as you can imagine, was Gretzky, whose 1996 Black Diamond run for the cup out of 100 PSA 7 sold for as high as 5520 U.S. dollars in January of this past year. Then you go to Wa, of course, as one of the greatest goalies in NHL history. He played 10 and a half seasons for the Montreal Canadiens, 
then was traded to Colorado Avalanche in the 1995-96 season and played another seven and a half seasons there. I always forget, Troy, that when Montreal traded Wa to the Avs, it was the Avs' inaugural season in, in the NHL. And they also won the Stanley Cup, which is just mind-blowing to think that they won the Stanley Cup in their first season. And a big part of that was this trade where Montreal tra- traded Mike Keane, who I think was a captain of the team at the time, to Colorado for Andre Kovalenko, Martin Rutinsky, and Jocelyn Thibault. Uh, so pretty good deal for the Avs there. In total, Wa won four Stanley Cups, two with Montreal and two in Colorado. The 1985 Calder Trophy winner, three-time Vesna Trophy winner, three-time Conn Smythe winner. His number 33 is retired by both Montreal and Colorado. He's in the Hall of Fame, of course. He's second all-time and wins for a goalie of 551. Finished his career with 500 or 2.54 goals against average, 0.910 save percentage. Again, one of the greatest goalies of all time. There have been three public sales for 1996 Black Diamond run for the Cup. Patrick Waugh out of 100. I think they were all raw. Most recent was it was a raw copy. It sold for 1,252 US this past July. All time high was for another raw copy that sold for 1,600 this past April. You got a current bit, Troy? 210 US dollars. All right. Okay, we're going to switch to modern. Uh, I had the first pick, and I picked this. 2019 Upper Deck Buybacks, Austin Matthews, Young Guns, Canvas, Gold Ink, Auto, Auto 10, PSA 10, Auto 10. Now, in my mind, this card's got a lot going for it. It's a Matthews rookie card. It's got the perfect grade, right? PSA 10, Auto 10. Mm-hmm. Gold Ink Auto. People love Gold Ink Autos. Very limited to 10. A big bonus for me, of course, is the hand numbering. Now, if I'm looking for flaws... The only thing really missing, of course, is America's favorite mustache, <laughs> as the young Matthews had not yet sprouted <laughs> his uh, mustache he's had ever since. I might need, I'm, I'm going to back up for a second, though. So this card had me thinking about, and I don't know if we've had this discussion yet, Troy, but so the card itself is a 2019 buyback where Upper Deck went and bought back some 2016 Young Guns canvases and then later had Matthews auto them. And then part of that 2019 buyback set. So the card itself is a 2016 Young Guns canvas, but like in the holder, it says 2019 Upper Deck buybacks. Is this still considered a rookie card then? So the back, does the back say 2019? No, the back says 2016 where the card so they is didn't, produced. Well, I've seen it where they actually put a new back, or I don't know how they do it. They've put the... Well, what that is is the COA, because the original yeah. card doesn't have... You know, on any auto card that comes out of a box or pack from upper deck, it has the uh, the autograph guarantee and authenticity. Yeah, I mean, had technically it's that. a rookie card, but the auto isn't a rookie year auto. So uh, one plus a yes and a plus a no, I guess, equals no. So I'll say no, it's not a rookie card. <laughs> it's kind of confusing, though, huh? Yeah. It's, uh, I'm sure that it's one of these issues where maybe half people consider yeah. it a rookie and other yep. others don't. Um, regardless, though, it's another option to consider if you're of the mindset like I typically am and looking for Young Guns base alternatives mm-hmm. to invest in. As an example, there's currently 3,205 Matthew Young Gun PSA 10s. There's an additional 5,244 Young Gun BGS 9.5s and 81 SGC 10s. So Matthews, if you look at his base Young Guns, is a total gem mint pop of 8,530. This card's out of 10. So th- th- that's where I, I really am kind of trying to focus my own collecting to those more rare and scarce cards. Especially, too, when you think about that his current PSA 10 value of his base Young Guns is about $870. That, uh, and that you can typically get, like, these buyback rookies pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. So I, I came up with an example here. There isn't There hasn't been a sale of this card, but another card from the 2019 buyback set is a 2016 OPT a rookie auto that out of 15 that sold for 510 US back in June. So let me ask you this question: Would you rather pay what is it, 870 dollars for a base Young Guns or 510 bucks for this? To me, I, I want this like cool, unique rookie auto card all day long. Yeah, I'm probably leaning that way, even though. 
I, don't know, I feel like I'm 50 50 on that because I think the Young Guns has the cachet, but I get I get the whole pop stuff. We've talked about that enough. Yeah. And I like that this is autoed. I'll, yeah, probably, I'll probably lean towards the auto just a little bit. Well, thanks for agreeing with me. <laughs> Matthews, of course, is off to a great start in the 2023 24 season. Uh, looks like he's having that bounce back year we were hoping for. Through 15 games played, 13 goals, six assists for 19 points. Twice 13 goals is tied with the Jets' Kyle Connor for most in the NHL. It's kind of wild. That was wild. The Leafs are off to a decent start, too. Currently tied with Detroit for third in the Atlantic Division with a record of 8 5 and 2 and 18 points. Like I said, I couldn't find a public sale for the this card, the 2019 buybacks, Austin Matthews 2016, UD Canvas Young Guns, Golden Gato out of 10. But there were a number of Matthew cards, though, in that. Like I mentioned, that 2019 buyback set and the high sale to date is a base Young Guns auto out of 34 that sold for 3,360 US this past July. Uh, you got a current bid on this one, though, Troy? 500 US dollars. All right. You have the next modern card? I do. I have this little tiny card. No, I'm just kidding. If you're watching on <laughs> YouTube, it was, <laughs> I saw it in the preview. I'm like, why is this shrunk? All right, I'm doing a 2018 SP Authentic Brady Kachuk rookie auto out of 999 PSA 10. I honestly chose this card because I started thinking about the Kachuks when I saw this, and we I don't think we ever talk about Brady. We always talk about Matthew. Matthew had his time. So I was like, well, I don't know if we've looked at a Brady Kachuk card in a while, if we ever have. Yeah. We might have, but whatever. But I want to look at the other, the other Brady. So we're going to look at Brady Kachuk, or the other Kachuk, Brady Kachuk. So again, card is PSA 10. It's great shape. You expect zoom in, do all that. It looks fine. It looks fantastic. It's a future watch auto, obviously. So it's going to be out of 9.99. So I guess there is that built-in scarcity. It's only 999 copies. Auto looks really clean. There is just a minor where it looks like the pen might have came off a little bit. Yeah, right at here. But again, really nice auto. Good coloring. Card looks great. I love his picture on there. It's like half confused, half half looking what's going on. Um, he doesn't have the but, mouth guard chewing problem. No, he has. doesn't. He's not like, did you see how Kachuk go after Bedard the other night? That was kind of fun. No. Yeah, I think it was Kachuk. It had to be, right? Oh, okay. I'll have to look I'll it up. Look maybe, that I, up. Maybe, maybe I had a dream that it was Kachuk. I don't know. You have weird All dreams. Right. Yeah, I do have weird dreams. So, and again, the Kachuk, I just want to look him up. So on this, on this, 23 24 season. He's got eight goals, four assists for 12 points in 13 games. So, Josh, was that like McDavid? Does he have 12? So, is Brady at 91st overall? <laughs> That's to be a story. Something like that. Well, he has, he has one more, more game point. More than double the goals is Connor McDavid. That's true. And then for his career, Brady Kachuk has 133 goals, 154 assists for 287 points in 372 games played. Definitely a market for Brady Kachuk. And while Ottawa is not the biggest city, I think it's the capital of Canada, right, Josh? Is that do we know our geography? I think so, because according to our friend Phil, everybody works for government there. Yeah, everyone works for the government. He's got they got a huge dedicated fan base, auto senators. And I brought up Phil too that hey, he's told me Brady Kachuk is a fan favorite. And maybe Phil's the uh the only collector of Brady Kachuk, but I have to believe there's a lot out there. He's got a good market. This card itself has a PSA 10 pop of 56, gem rate of 52%. And in Terapeak, the last verified sale I could find was on September 25th of this year for 485 US dollars. I didn't realize it went for that much or that that would be the yeah. last sale. I thought that was really high. But current bid on this is 26 US dollars. Yeah, and a little uncomfortable conversation with our guy Phil at the expo while we were eating lunch about my guy, Timmy Stutzla as Phil's an Ottawa super fan. And he had some disconcerting things for me about like attitude wise and mm. whininess out of Stutzla. So things I'm going to need to explore a little bit, but was not great in that regard. All right. Last card we're going to feature in our modern picks for this week's current PWCC weekly auction is this 2019 OPG platinum, Sidney Crosby retro, Golden Treasures 101 PSA 10. Every time I see the card named Golden Treasures lately, immediately, like, and it's happening right now, you know the Beatles song, Golden Slumbers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> plays in my head. Nice. 
Did that happen to anyone else out there? I probably just should apologize <laughs> now because I just planted that. I'm sure in a few heads. Uh, this is a really cool card, in my opinion. And as much as I'm already an OPG Platinum fanboy, I really, really love OPG Platinum retro cards. So a bigger fanboy there. Uh, almost 100% of the time, the, the Platinum retro designs are my favorite in each mm-hmm. Platinum set. And the first thing that jumped out to me about this card is how great the design of the card is. It kind of feels like a perfect design. Like, uh, I just love the design. And the Golden Treasures aspects, I think, gives the card a cool color match as well. And Troy, as we just kind of talked about the stature release, there are a lot of one on one. So that that's the tricky part of this card to me is it's hard at times, I think, to delineate from a one of one perspective, which ones are truly significant in the mm-hmm. hobby and which are sort of like one of ones like noise a little bit. And so th- that's what I wonder on this one is, is this a significant card? And honestly, I don't know. I just know it's a really cool card and it's really cool, I guess, that it's a one of one. I guess what it has going forward is a platinum card. Again, cool design. And so there's a lot of desire and, and chase right now around platinum. Um, so would there be a one one then also a golden treasure of the non-retro version? Yes. Okay. Course. I mean, not, I'm d- not trying to say it's like stature. I was just curious. Yeah. It bets 14 years into his career. Yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know if anyone cares. Um, pretty interesting too, that this card is a PSA 10. Not that, they say like a lot of times we grade super manners in the case of one on one, but you also don't find a ton of one on ones that have that perfect gem mm-hmm. in grade. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe for like a perfectionist type, that might make a small difference for the card. Um, but I don't know. Do you like this card? I do. I like it. I mean, it should be very clean design. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I would hope not knowing what the last sale was, or <laughs> obviously it's probably not a last last sale. But hopefully somewhat affordable for us Crosby 101, maybe. I don't know. Well, hold the phone on last sale because unique circumstance here. Oh, this one did it sell? Uh kind of. Okay. Yeah, it did, but it was okay. part of a lot. So I, I <laughs> next, <I'll laughs> okay. picture. Oh, I love it. So it appears that the rainbow set of the there 2019. It is. Yeah, there it is. Right? OBG Platinum Crosby Retro sold for 1250 US on March 7th. Of course, it's going to be the most valuable card of the five. Yeah, is this 90% of it, probably, you think? I mean, what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's every variation. Yeah. So I would guess maybe $1,000 or something like yeah. that if, based on 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 those cards. Um, mm. uh, again, nonetheless, super cool card. I'm, I'm sure it'll appeal to any Crosby collector. You got a current bid? 210 US dollars. Okay, be sure to head to pwccmarketplace.com to further look at the cards that we picked in the current uh, PWCC weekly auction and all the other cards that are awesome as well and uh, place your bids. Okay, for personal pickups, we're going to kind of pick up on our $100 Fall Expo challenge. So if you caught our last show before the not our last show, the show before that, I challenged Troy to find the best hockey card at the Expo for $100 US dollars or less. And part of the idea here is to maybe demonstrate that you, you don't need to have a billionaire's budget to go to the and find cool cards at a big show like the Toronto Sport Card Expo. <laughs> so I got my card on Saturday. It was my last day at the show. Troy, you picked up your card on Sunday. Uh, I just peeked ahead. <laughs> I didn't look at your story. Now you jerk. Uh, you did something <laughs> sneaky. Uh, <laughs> candor to the audience. So we're going to reveal the cards now. And then later today, I'm going to put up an Instagram poll and you guys are going to vote which one of us picked up the best $100 card at the expo. I'm going to lose faith in our audience if I don't win this. So here we go. (laughs) You you outfoxed me. So I thought I had a pretty good deal on a pretty cool card. My card is a 2017 OPG Platinum Wayne Gretzky Rainbow Color Wheel PSA 10. I think it's got a fairly low pop, like 20 or I, I forgot to write it down, like 20 or something. It's got Gretzky in the Campbell Conference. Yeah. Uh, All-Star Jersey with the NHL with the downward sloping yep. um, logo. I think it fits um, with the color. Like, I, I like that yeah. jersey combination. Now, he's got oil pretty. Gloves. He's got oil gloves pretty, on, but I like that. Yeah. Proud of myself, and I'm going to lose. So you just show your card. <laughs> out. No, I, I, you'll only lose if the if the – Viewers, I guarantee you, I'm gonna lose. Listeners can agree. So, 
I I need a we need a button bar so bad, so bad. But I'm just gonna play this for you, Josh. <laughs> you got O'Reilly. I you did. definitely got O'Reilly. All right. So if you're watching on YouTube, let's. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make our screen a little bigger. So I didn't take a picture of it, but I'm gonna show it. So my card that I got was a 2019 2020 the Cup Ryan O'Reilly gold foil autograph patch out of eight. So super rare, two color patch. I actually love the patch. The patch is actually really cool. And again, everyone just got O'Reilly. I was looking for a card and I came across this and I'm like, you know what? This is perfect because it's, it, I'll add it to my growing Ryan or our growing Ryan O'Reilly collection because we've been building them yeah. up as people have been sending us cards. And then I have a couple that I can add to it. But it's a great card, great patch, out of eight, rare. Auto looks awesome. It's got his number on it. So that's what I went with. It was fantastic. And I got it. I actually, yeah, I got it for like 75 US dollars, which is probably 25 to 35 too much. <laughs> but I was I was happy to add it. I was I love it. Not for this audience. You've played to the crowd. And <laughs> Uh, I think I got a deal on. I know I got a deal on my yeah. card. But, well, I was, yeah, okay. I was. There was some Pekka's I was running around looking at, but they were a little bit out. I probably could have talked one of them down to get to the budget range, but it wasn't one I was really excited about. And I just, I don't know. This one, this one spoke to me, Josh. It spoke, it spoke to the be people. honest. Be, be really honest. You saw that card, and the first thing in your mind was, I got him. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Well, I I saw it and I started laughing because I saw the price, yeah. so I knew I could get it down to, yeah. to be in the range. And then I think I was walking around with. I think Neil was still with me. He never told me. He told me you got one. Yeah, he knew what him, it was. He knew it. Was. I honestly did not know this until right now. Yeah, he knew what it was. And then David, our friend, California Dave, I showed. Oh. I actually ran into Dave at the airport when we were leaving. Like he was on a flight out to L.A. at the some you know hour or two before what, we... what did he say when he saw it did he laugh oh he laughed yeah i'll do the poll just because you know to <laughs> now we see be... now you're trying to get sympathy now everyone's gonna vote for you because you're gonna get sympathy no i just i just know when i didn't <laughs> beat, beat me okay. all right well, that's our show for this thursday if you like the episode please leave a rating review on apple spotify or whatever podcast app you listen to us on if you love the show, you want to support us, you want to chat with us on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 a month donation. Join our auto $199 support level tier on Patreon. The link is in the show description, whether you're listening to us on a podcast app or watching us on YouTube. You can go to our website, HockeyCardsGongShow.com, and click on the Become a Patron link. You can go directly to the Patreon website at P-A-T-R-E-O-N and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show, or there's a link in our link tree in our Instagram and TikTok profiles. Uh, we're on social media. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And Troy, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dolly Box Ventures, LLC. Have an awesome weekend. We cannot wait to chat with you all again on Monday.